the small amount of money that you have lying in your bank should not reduce your chance of investing into something. In fact, many of the greatest investors, the greatest people that have a lot of money, the millionaires that you hear about out there, they started with so much less. So that should not discourage you into making something. However, investing with a low income will slow your process down a little bit because you need an upfront deposit, management, education, some knowledge about what you're doing, of course, and time. Don't let that slow you down because you take a risk every single day whether you realize it or not. When you hit that doorstep, when you get out of that doorstep, that's a risk that you tell yourself that you're going to take. So let's get into investing because the you of tomorrow will be so glad that the you of today did this. Hello my beautiful people, my name is Sheila Noel and welcome to my channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and like this video for the YouTube algorithm because in this channel we talk about how to improve our lifestyle's performance every single day. And please turn on your notification bell so that you know whenever I upload something new. Speaking of lifestyle performance, one of the main causes of stress is money or the lack thereof. So whether you want to invest into something as a hobby or you want to change your lifestyle and improve your income by a little bit, it's a risk. Investing is a risk. How much of a risk is up to you. Which is why the first step that you should know about is to determine your level of risk and take. Yes, everybody does not take risk the same way. You may be great at taking risk and someone else in your same vicinity may not. So determine what you can handle either you are a high risk taker or a low risk taker. This will help you greatly because you will now understand where you can allocate your money towards. High risk, of course it gives you a high return sometimes, but it can also be the worst for your money. It's a risk, a lot of people do it. You see that in investments for real estates and things like that. But the return is greater. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that is this the right step for you? And of course, there are other things that you can research on how to invest in those high risk for a better benefit for you. And a fast turnout. Fast turnout meaning you can see the result within a few years instead of 10 years. Now for the low risk intake. If you are a low risk taker, the strategy will be slightly different. Your money will be a little safer, but it will take a longer time, a longer period of time for you to re reap the income that you so long for. In these categories, you will find for a high risk taker, you will find real estate, you will find stock and bonds, you will find business, you will find options. Of course there are more but these are a few and we'll get back into those in a little bit maybe um, or I'll put them down in the description. Low risk takers, um, low risk options are dividend investment, 401k, high interest savings, Roth IRA, mutual funds, index funds, and exchange trade funds or ETFs. The second thing that you need to do is put your money towards a high interest saving. I know we touched upon it a little bit in the first step, but this is a very great thing to do whether you want to invest or not because it's kind of like giving your money some free money but you have to be consistent every single time you need to add a little bit more whether it's ten dollars or five dollars when you add up 
your money, it accumulates and it will be a better return for you in the future. I started with just $15 because my income would only allow me to do that. And that's okay because I know that whenever I increase my income, it will increase with me and my savings will also increase. So more importantly, I know that the future of me will be so proud of me today. Quite easy to create multiple savings accounts. For example, I like bank actually allows me to allocate money towards my mom and dad funds, my investment funds, and emergency funds. And it's all in the same profile, which is awesome because a lot of banks never used to do that in the beginning. So I do put those down so that I don't check up on them. I just know that these are the things that I go straight towards. I put money towards them first before anything else of course there's rent and things like that and loans after that but we're talking about savings accounts another great thing that you can do while you're doing that is set up an automated system I don't personally do that because my income is not fixed but if you have a low income and you get your same check every single day every single uh, it's bi-weekly then you can know exactly what to put towards those things every time that your, you know, that your cash comes. For me, every time that the cash comes, I actually do it manually so that I know what I can give at certain time and what I can't and what I need to put towards something else. Number three is invest in yourself. Now, you may be wondering, why didn't I not tell you this before at the beginning well it's simply because investing yourself is something that requires dedication and whether I tell you that first or someone does you won't know until you actually understand what you want to invest in ahead of time now, let me explain other people always talked about starting your own business or investing in bonds or stocks or dividends and things like that but I never really cared because at the time I, I knew that I wanted to do that but I never necessarily tried until for me until I actually put my money and actually lost a little bit so I did not do my research properly and that's why investing in yourself ahead of time will be great for you. For me, I learned my lesson the hard way, so don't do that. <laughs> Though this may be a very crucial step in your life, it doesn't give you the money that you need right away. And this is why you may be wondering, why am I investing in yourself? Well, you are doing that for the future. But for now, let's say that you have $100 and you do need to make that multiply. I do understand that a lot of people, they say that you need to go buy a book. But what you can do to save you some money and learn at the same time, go to a library and find those books and read there. This way you can save your, your $100 and whatever you read in the book that you um, that you took for investment, you can actually put that money towards it. So um, investing in yourself can be in forms of books, education, towards college, and things like that. How to get things for free first, like your education, learn, you have the internet, you have the libraries, learn how you can do that without spending money first. And then when you start getting your income, that's when you can uh, start paying for more education and seminars and things like that. Free internships are really great ways that you can um, explore what you want to do. I did that a lot in college. Um, not as much as I would want. I did a couple. I, I, I don't think I could have done more than that. But if you are able to do a lot more internships, then that's great for you. That will be great for your future because you prepare yourself 
while you're studying and you get the practice so that when you do get out to find a job, you get uh, other types of experiences. Did you guys a quote? Cool? Education is the passport to the future for tomorrow, belongs to those who prepare for it today. That was said by Malcolm X. So yes, education is really important. So let's recap now. One, you need to determine your risk intake. Two, you need to put your money towards a high savings account so that when you are ready to invest, it will be ready and with interest. And three, invest in yourself. So thank you again for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, push your notification bell so that you know whenever I upload something new. Until then, Ara Bye!